Um, I'm Dr. Michael Cotrere. I'm a neurologist uh, in the uh, headache section in the Department of Neurology at the Mayo Clinic. Um, talking today about um, a case report that um, our group is uh, presenting at the American Academy of Neurology meeting uh, this year. Very interesting case of a woman who uh, we saw um, after having uh, had about uh, 25 years of uh, really intractable headaches. Um, she uh, in her mid-20s uh, developed, really without any kind of antecedent uh, causative event, uh, very, very severe um, positional headaches that would appear uh, when she stood upright uh, and would uh, improve when she became recumbent. Uh, over the years, these worsened. and In fact, um, the headaches became almost constant. Uh, she uh, had several investigations, and the investigations indicated that it was uh, based on uh, the low CSF pressure state. Uh, and that can occur in, in several settings. Um, most often it occurs after someone has had a lumbar puncture um, and is caused by a small uh, leak uh, from the hole uh, uh, induced by the lumbar puncture. Uh, but at other times it occurs spontaneously, probably most often when there is a, a tear uh, in the dura. Uh, what happens is the spinal fluid leaks out uh, and decreases the buoyancy of, of the brain. Uh, the brain basically floats in uh, spinal fluid um, and um, it keeps gravity from uh, acting on the brain, uh, pulling it down and putting traction on pain sensitive structures, pain sensitive dual structures. Uh, this is a, a fairly common problem um, and uh, when it's not remediable to uh, treatments, uh, either with blood patches or um, surgical treatments, uh, can be quite disabling because there aren't uh, very good medical therapies in general. Unfortunately for her, uh, over the years, uh, treatments had been uh, largely ineffective. The sort of uh, customary treatment uh, for this uh, uh, blood patch, where we uh, put a little bit of a person's own blood in the uh, space, the CSF space, uh, causing um, uh, a renormalization of the pressure uh, would work for her for a, a very brief period of time and then she would be back to where she was before. And, um, as well as sort of a desperation act, um, we recommended treatment with botulinum toxin A uh, for, uh, for these headaches. Uh, we had been using uh, Botox uh, for uh, several years uh, for treatment of migraine um, and had been uh, successful in many, many patients. So, uh, because we really didn't have very much else to offer her, we uh, gave her the Botox. And uh, to everybody's um, surprise, she made a remarkable improvement. Uh, the overall intensity of her uh, headaches decreased from a severe level, about 8 out of 10, down to about 3 out of 10. And um, although uh, not perfect, um, it allowed her to resume a much more normal life. So by the time um, we wrote this paper, she had been uh, receiving um, repeated botulinum toxin injections over a period of about three years, and so the results were quite consistent. Um, after the treatment, she would uh, receive an improvement that would persist for about three months, and then gradually, as the effects of the uh, Botox uh, decreased, uh, the pain would return. Well, we think that this is important because it gives us a little bit of insight into uh, the way the Botox uh, might be working in our, um, in our headache patients in general. It implies that it's a nonspecific mechanism rather than having a specific effect on migraine per se. Um, and it also gives us um, a little hope that uh, for this small group of patients who have uh, headaches based on low CSF pressure that there may be uh, another viable treatment option for them. Uh, patients who in many cases uh, for which there are no other treatments.